Welcome. Let's see how to level up a Cyan character using a Caustic Arrow with Ballista Totems. Cyan, later Ascendant, is the most unique character in the game. The Ascendancy skill tree you're presented with is very distinct. You can pick two Ascendancies from other characters condensed and summarized, gaining multiple bonuses that the particular Ascendancy is most known for. In most cases, it's better to be more specialized, but if you don't value any explicit virtues of other characters, but you'd like to have more wiggle room across the tree, and more points to spend, then it is in fact a pick without parallel. Its most popular builds are now Ward Loop or an Aura Stacker. This guide will cover all the basics for leveling with a Caustic Arrow. It's a Chaos Damage Over Time build that uses a bow. There's an overabundance of passives to enhance exactly this type of damage on the right side and near the center on the bottom right of the passive skill tree. Caustic Arrow doesn't need to hit a target to create the Caustic Ground, but the Ballista Totems do, so accuracy is still quite important. The Caustic Ground is the main source of damage, and despite it being a Chaos Damage Over Time skill, it's not poison as it's not caused by a hit, it's its own thing. For boss fights, you will deploy Ballista Totems, which should significantly improve your single target damage. These constructions will deal high hit and poison damage, which is Chaos Dot just like Caustic Ground. Moreover, Ballista Totems count as an attack, meaning their damage is sourced from a bow. Transitioning to another Ascendant build, you will need to re-specialize and revert points on your skill tree, there's no way around it. Nonetheless, it's one of the fastest, and cheapest ways to level up. It may not be the best league starter, as having Tabula Raza is quite a game changer. Caustic Arrow shall be used from the beginning. You're only interested in the Caustic Ground aspect of this skill. Attack speed is unimportant, as these ground effects cannot be layered. This attack will also be used by a Mirage Archer so that you won't have to stop and attack each time you see a pack of enemies. Why not use Toxic Rain? Its damage is too reliant on attack speed, area of effect, and the number of projectiles which as a Cyan were not really equipped to handle as much as other classes, and the damage is still good enough. Link it with Onslaught, Mirage Archer, Void Manipulation, Efficacy, and Lesser Multiple Projectiles in Act 1. In the next act, add Vicious Projectiles and Concentrated Effect. The next upgrade is in Act 4, you can replace LMP with GMP. Shrapnel Ballista can be used as soon as level 4. It's an additional source of damage. At first, you'll be able to summon two of them to aid you during boss fights not only for more DPS but also to take some hits instead of your character doing so. Shrapnel Ballista has a short range but it's able to shotgun enemies, meaning many of its projectiles can hit one enemy, afflicting many stacks of poison and dealing significant damage against bosses, especially the large ones like Katava. It deals purely physical damage which inflicts poison and bleeding for more dot. Link it with chance to bleed, chance to poison, withering touch, and multiple totem support if you have a fifth socket. Added fire damage is good if you have a bow with high physical damage. Withering step. Applies a few stacks of withered debuff on enemies, grants phasing, and elusive buffs making your character faster. It puts your other movement skills on cooldown so you may not want to use it. You can choose Phase Run instead. Dash is a simple blink type skill to move faster and dodge attacks. Alternatively, use Flame Dash. Steel Skin is a guard spell that reduces incoming damage for some time and stops bleeding. You can link it to the cast when damage taken. Despair reduces Chaos Resistance which is the main type of damage you're dealing. Flame Golem, an optional choice for slightly increased damage. To resummon it automatically, you can link it to the cast when damage taken. There are three mana reserving spells we recommend. Purity of Elements grants a lot of elemental resistances and complete immunity to all elemental ailments. Herald of Agony increases the chance of poisoning by 20% and makes you deal more poison damage which is great with shrapnel ballistas. Haste increases your movement and attack speed. If you can't afford to reserve mana, use only the Vol version. If you already have a lot of elemental resistances, use Malevolence instead of Purity of Elements for more damage over time and increased skill effect duration.
On your gear seek added physical or chaos damage. For the best in slot weapon, you'll have to find a rare one. Chaos damage over time is also valuable, but much rarer. We've listed the unique items that are especially fitting. You can craft rare items via essences, of envy or contempt. Movement speed is another very valuable stat, mostly found on boots, quicksilver flasks, and passives. Due to the six, white, linked sockets, Tabula Raza is the single best, and relatively cheap, body armor you can wear since level 1. Goldrum, a helmet with a lot of elemental resistances. It too can be worn at level 1. The permanent onslaught from Thrillsteel will increase your movement and attack speed. La Hup of all grants attributes, resistances, and damage. One of the best leveling rings. Blackheart adds tons of extra chaos damage to attacks and can be worn at level 1. Rigwald's Crest requires level 20. You can use it to summon wolves on kill and these are relatively powerful. At level 30, you can equip Thief's Torment Ring with tons of various utility bonuses. You won't be able to wear a second ring with it. Astramentus can be used if you desperately need a lot of attributes, it probably won't be needed. Karui Ward is an excellent amulet for any build attacking with projectiles. It increases movement speed, projectile speed, projectile damage, accuracy, and grants attributes. String of Servitude's Belt, which can be worn at level 1, may be the best source of elemental resistances with the right implicit. Meganerd's Girdle adds a significant amount of physical damage to attacks, a lot of strength, some cold resistance, maximum life, and flask life recovery rate. You can wear Loctonial Caress Gloves at level 1 for more attack speed and a chance for various charges on kill. 7 League Step are the fastest boots in the game with their 50% increased movement speed. Heavily recommended. At level 5 you can start wielding Quill Rainbow. It has quite good physical damage and attack speed but lowers your damage. At level 66 you can use Lion Eyes Glare which has the highest physical DPS out of all unique bows. A good rare may outclass it. Drillneck is a level 36 quiver that adds maximum life and physical damage. It's good with caustic arrow due to increased damage against pierced enemies. Use life flask, mana flask if you need more mana, silver flask if you need onslaught, and as many quicksilver flasks as you can fit. It makes you move faster so that you can finish leveling sooner. Bismuth flask can be used if you lack resistances. Here, we've showcased the part of the skill tree that will interest you the most. The best passives are labeled as S tier, and you should definitely allocate them first. It's a combination of maximum life, resistance, and damage. In the next tier, we've picked other good nodes and clusters to be picked afterward. Finally, the third grade passives, which are still mostly fitting, might be also completely useless or too far away. It depends on your situation. In the highest tier, we recommend picking up nodes for maximum life, elemental resistances, multiple bow and damage over time while wielding a bow nodes. Thick skin is picked only for its bonus to maximum life. Pathing to sentinel from the center would grant you significantly more elemental resistances. Heavy draw increases physical damage and damage over time with bows. Located in the same cluster Deadly Draw increases damage over time and improves damage dealt by poison. The Aspect of the Eagle is a great bow passive. Increases damage, attack speed, dot, and accuracy. Allocate Heart of Oak for an increased maximum life and life regeneration after using a flask. Avatar of the Hunt's movement speed, damage with bows, evasion, and dot are all extremely good. Ballistic is used simply for more damage and dexterity. Evasion and phasing, a small node that grants you a chance for phasing buff on kill. Farsight increases damage, attack speed, accuracy, and dot with bows. Finesse supplies you with attack speed, accuracy, and dexterity. I-tier passives are also very good. Here we focused more on evasion, poison chance, reservation efficiency, some maximum life, and even more damage. 
Poison Chance is useful mostly for the Ballista Totems. The B tier offers more niche additions. Here we've pointed out Life and Mana Leech so you won't rely entirely on Flasks, Source of Onslaught buff on Kill, some Maximum Life, Movement Speed, and Damage. For the Masteries, you will have a chance to get more Maximum Life from Life Masteries. Plain 50 extra life at first, then 10% increased maximum life. There are also two bow masteries we'd like to recommend. Increased Mirage Archer duration so that you won't have to fire constantly to keep it active, and plus 100 to accuracy rating per green socket on equipped bow, for your ballistas. And that's basically it. You should now be able to level up your Cyan character with ease. Good luck.